Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show. Steve Basic, architect here. I'm still down in Columbia, Missouri. Today, we're gonna carry on our conversation about air barrier continuity. If you haven't seen the video where I talked about it earlier, where we did the red line test and, and kind of set up the framing for using drywall as our air barrier, go check out those videos. If you check them out, then let's get going. You can see here, drywall is installed. And the drywall here is our air barrier. Now, there's a lot of people out there that make an argument, oh, you can't use drywall as an air barrier. Oh, it'll never work. My comment or retort back to them is, take a piece of drywall, try and blow through it. Good luck. It works as an air barrier. It's very successful air barrier. I have houses in the point sub point two range where we use drywall as the air barrier on the ceiling. So that argument, that's dead to me. I use drywall as the air barrier. I think it can be used successfully and we're using it here at our Hilltop Aero Project. As you can see here, the drywall is in, but notice that it goes above the top plate, right? So intentionally we came in, we put in all the drywall and then we had the framers return for a day or two of inside work, which consequently some of you might say, oh, it's out of sequence. Man, that sucks having them guys come back for another day. But the reality is, is the framers were able to fill in a couple days of rainy days with inside work on days that they might not have had any work. So the framer basically, or Jake basically told the framer, hey, sometime in the next two weeks, if we have you know, some days where you can send the framers over, we'll bang out those interior partitions. And that's exactly what they did. So while it might seem like that sequencing is a burden, it actually turns into an asset for the framing company because now they have work and it's indoor work on a rainy day. So that being said, we have our air barrier. It's fully intact, in place, taped off. Framers come back. They put in the interior partitions. They go up to it. Over here around the perimeter, we have that detail. Remember I showed you, and we'll go back to the studio and we'll talk a little bit more and refresh our memory, but we have that Advantec flange that runs around the perimeter that our drywall connects to, and then that Advantec takes my air barrier out to the exterior sheathing and gets taped off and comes down the wall. So we maintain that air barrier continuity from the wall through that ceiling level. Let's jump back to the studio. We'll break out some details. Of course, Big Red is going to be anxious to join in and uh, we'll get this discussion carried on further. Hey, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that trip out to the job site. Nothing better than walking a job site, in my opinion. Love watching it come together. Gents out at Aero Building, Jake and Brad, doing a wonderful job out there. Project's going along really nice. And... Uh, Hopefully we uh, learned a little something out there, looking at drywall as an air barrier. You know, I often get the question of, hey, can I use this material? What's the best material for this? I say the one that's installed right. So what does that mean? It means that we need some good details and then we need some good execution. So got my good friend Big Red here. Got a details right there. Let's have at it and let's talk this through. First thing about the details, you see this one is a little shorter than that one. So basically I took the building section, we cut out the middle and then took the two ends and put it together because everything that happens in here is pretty darn consistent. So, you know, when we talk about air barriers, one of the things we're looking for is continuity, right? So we have our house. We have a basement, so there's grade. We have a basement, and then we have a first floor, second floor, and attic. Um, in this case here, sorry, it's really gable, but this house here has a shed roof, mono slope. Uh, but regardless, they're all vented attics, so it doesn't much matter. But the illustration here, the important thing is, is that it's a six-sided box. It has a top, it has sides, it has a bottom, and a 
goes back, right? And that roof is on there, but it has those back sides and these sides. So it's a six sided box. And basically that air barrier follows the lines of that six sided box. Now, granted, you're gonna have <clears throat> negative spaces, positive spaces where things protrude out and all that good stuff. And it's gonna complicate it more than six sides. I am bringing it down to a common denominator for us to understand the concept better. Remember with air barriers, right? What's my rule? You're either inside or you're outside. There is nothing in between. You're either inside or you're outside. It is that simple. So when we're looking at the six-sided box for this particular video and detail, we're going to concentrate on the air barrier continuity across the lid or across the ceiling on the second floor that demises the second floor from the vented attic. Now, why do we vent attics? Well, we vent attics to rid the house of moisture. So we have our input here for intake in the soffit. You can see we have that dashed line and that air goes up into that vent. That vent at some point stops and then just becomes this open space. And so that open space now is connected to the upper portion, which is also a vent here in the soffit to match the same vent we have in the soffit here. So the air goes up and out. And when it does, it takes all of with it, that hops on that train. So we have a, I guess you could say, a tre tremendous amount of air leakage in the attic, right? That, that air goes because we want to induce that airflow so that any moisture that's migrating up through the system can get on that air train and get kicked out of the house. But what we don't want, we don't want the air that's in our condition space here or the air that is inside to mix with the air that is here which is air on the outside. We want inside air to stay inside air, and we want outside air to stay outside air. How do we do that? Well, we need this thing called the air barrier. So in this case here, we have these flanges, and you can see those in the photos. They run over the top of the top plate. We have our T-stud wall assembly here. We have the same T-stud wall assembly, the opposing wall, and we have our zip R9 and our zip R9 here. So the inside versus, well, we put in I for inside, O for outside. So outside, inside, inside. We have our zip R9 but I need to transfer that into this horizontal plane that is the demising between the inside and the outside of our vented attic and inside of our conditioned space. Now, there's a lot of materials that you can use up there. I've done some videos where we've actually ran zip across there. We can do Intello, Myrex. Um, there's a number of different materials, but the one that I use very common is drywall. Why? Because we're putting it up regardless. So if I can put it up and I can have it work as the interior finish, but I can also make it work as the air barrier, then it's basically doing double duty by doing a couple things. 
by putting that same piece of material up. So we're going to buy it for the interior finish. So we might as well take that investment and use it as something else, like our air barrier. Um, so zip R9 comes up. We have that flange. We run a couple beads of sealant on that flange, and then that attaches to the drywall. And you can see in a couple of the photos there where the drywall is basically put in before all the interior partitions are done. And we do that because we want, yeah, you guessed it, continuity, right? I know, I'm probably driving you crazy with about a lot of these repeated words, but remember, building science is that simple. We tend to want to complicate it. Keep it simple. You're either inside or you're outside. The vented attic is outside. We need that air barrier there. We're going to use drywall. We're going to use drywall because we're buying it as an interior finish. We've already made the investment. So let's get hot and use it as our air barrier too. Um, there's a lot of people that say, oh, you can't use drywall as an air barrier. It's going to crack. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. Well, to those people, I say, go get a piece of drywall, put your lips on it, try and blow through it. You can't. It's air impermeable. Um, I've tried it uh, just to be able to prove my statement. But, um, you know, and, and even if it does crack, it's not like the drywall is going to crack and you're going to go from a house that is at 0.5 ACH50 to a house that becomes 5 ACH50, right? It might go from 0.5 to 0.52. So it's not really at a loss there. And I have numbers of houses where drywall where, you know, 0 0.16, 0 0.37, a bunch of 0.30s, you know, a couple dozen um, passive house air tightness numbers using drywall. So I feel very confident in using it. And, uh, and a number of those houses, we've even had subsequent tests where we've gone back years for a year or two afterwards. And one of them we have, I don't know, four tests now. And that number is that it was 0.45, I believe. And it's somewhere between 0.45 and 0.47 um, over the course of four years. So it really hasn't lost any of its value. But uh, continuity is the key. Drywall can be used as an air barrier. Occasionally, you're going to come in here and say, hey, we're going to need a light. And you can see in the photo there, Jake does a good job taking some of the zip scraps and he makes little light boxes and he installs those and they have a little flange and the drywall guys, you can seal that up nice to that and then have the light fixture inside those light boxes. Right. Have that in the ceiling. So there's a lot of ways to do it. But uh, this has always been an effective way. I vent the roof, vent until you can't, <clears throat> provide that nice air barrier across here. And the thing about drywall is, you know, you can get it in big sheets. So getting continuity out of that system, it's pretty easy. Here in New England, we do a plaster finish, but, you know, down by Jake's, they do more of a drywall finish where they're just treating the joints but either way, it's it's a very effective tool. Um, you know, Jake, we've we've had a couple in that point three range or better with uh, Jake, where we've uh, done our blower door and proved that yeah we can get there and we can get there using the drywall. It's just remember, can't stress it enough. You're either inside or you're outside. And when you're outside, you want to get rid of that moisture. It wants to get on that air train. But what you don't want is air moving across that plane. We have a zero tolerance for that, right? It's okay for vapor to move across that plane because that vapor that moves across, that's the whole purpose of a vented attic is to allow that moisture to migrate up, get up in here, and then get whisked away on the vented airstream. 
So it's one of those things. It may seem complicated, but when you break it down to the basic common denominators, we have that vented airstream, and we just want to keep it separated from our interior air. We don't, basically don't want an airstream across the wall or across the ceiling, right? We don't want that, but we want the moisture to migrate up there and get out. Anyways, drywall air barrier. You can use it. Continuity is the key. And remember, I'm going to say it a thousand times a year. You're either inside or you're outside. There is no middle ground. All right. Capping Big Red means we're done. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Huh? Nothing better than talking about a little drywall air barrier. And uh, yeah, man, that's exciting stuff, isn't it? So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, go check out some more. We got videos upon videos on the Build Show Network. Go check it out. Matt, Jake, Brent, Wade, Zach, Drywall Shorty, Aaron, Design Build Doug, and myself. Literally hundreds of videos on the Build Show Network. All yours. Free to view. Seven times, the science says. If you're looking for more, Steve Bazek Architect on Instagram. Follow my daughter also, Alexandra Bazek. She's putting up some great stuff. Um... You can also find me on the Unbuilded Podcast, where I team up with good friends Jake Bruton and Peter Yost, um, and uh, have some really good talks on there, too. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. Until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>